Hi everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about a poster that Cam Miskelly, uh, our Time Scavengers collaborator, presented at Southeastern section of the Geological Society of America meeting uh, that was held this year in Charleston, South Carolina. So this poster was called Social Media Outlets for Effective Communication of Geoscience Education. Um, and I'm gonna kind of zoom in on each of these sections so I can kind of take you through them a bit more closely. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with Time Scavengers, it's an interactive and educational website that allows the general public to have easy access to information regarding topics about paleontology, geology, evolution, and climate change. We break down this information with easy to understand graphics and associated text, and you can kind of learn at your own pace. So we have introductory material, but we also have a series of blog components so you can learn about the individual lives of scientists and kind of get an insight into their experiences and kind of hear their own viewpoints. So currently we have about 10 site collaborators. They're all pictured here and they come from a variety of backgrounds. Um, they're avocational scientists, writers, um, all the way up to a faculty member. So a very broad range of career stages. Um, so the idea of this poster was to figure out how we can assess um, the participation in the Fossil Friday hashtag. So this is something that's been very popular on our different social media platforms and we were wondering if it was actually driving activity to the website or not. So that's what kind of like our, our goal or aim for this study. So for you, those of you unfamiliar with different platforms of social media, um, we ha are on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can follow us at Time Scavengers. Um, and on Facebook, we have a page so we can share things and we can share outside information onto our page, but people can't really post onto our page, not like a group. Um, but the really great thing about Facebook is that you can easily share posts into many different kinds of groups onto your own timeline, onto your friend's timeline. So there's an, an ease of information sharing on Facebook. Um, on Twitter, we are primarily followed by academics and educators. So it's everywhere from students to faculty to museum educators, things like that. Um, there's not a lot of room to share information on Twitter because the information can, has to fit within 280 characters. So we try to have graphics that kind of augment whatever we say in the tweet or in any of the other posts so that we can um, convey the information both in the graphic and in the text information. Um, on our Instagram, we cater to a visual and a younger audience. So we have an image that has a caption underneath it, unlike Twitter where you have the caption on top and the image under it. Um, and you can also follow hashtags on Instagram. So if you're following the hashtag Fossil Friday, but not necessarily following our account, um, you still might see our content, which is pretty cool. So for a while we had been releasing a Fossil, fossil Friday post every Friday um, as a way to kind of showcase the diversity of life on earth. So we were trying to post different types of fossils. So we did lots of invertebrates, vertebrates, microfossils, plants. Um, tiny to kind of get like a variety of things and not focus on any one specific group. Um, so we were collecting some data from Facebook, um, impressions, which are the total not time, the total number of times the post was displayed. Um, this is the definition for Facebook and Instagram. Um, but on Twitter, it's the total number of views of the conversation. Reach is the total number of people who saw the post on Facebook, and Instagram. Um, or the size of an audience for a conversation on Twitter. So engagements were how many times somebody liked, retweeted, commented, or shared our post. And then we were able to calculate an engagement rate. So all of those kind of interactions divided by the total reach times 100 to kind of try and normalize it because we did get um, a variety of like numbers of reach. So we don't want um, something that reaches a broad audience but doesn't get a lot of interactions should be um, not equally weighted to something that got a lot of engagements but didn't reach as many people. So moving along, this is an example of our Fossil Friday posts on Twitter. Um, we've been active since July 2017. Um, we have just under 800 followers um, at the time of this presentation. Um, this is kind of an example of our Fossil Friday on Twitter. So like I said, the text is above the image. 
Um, and here's an example of the engagement. So you can see kind of the overall breakdown and how we kind of get these numbers. So on Facebook, it's slightly different. We can have a longer post. Um, we've got um, a little bit less of a following, uh, but they're often more active with commenting um, and engaging with our content. So the engagements you can see are broken down here. We've even got a wow. Um, and then on Instagram, this is our um, most recent platform. So we have the fewest amount of followers, but we've getting, been getting quite a lot of engagements probably because it's very easy to just kind of scroll through and double tap on images when you're looking through your feed. So here's an example of what our um, Instagram kind of stats look like and then how we kind of display the content in the post. So let's get into the data. So we also collect Google Analytics data kind of passively on the back end. So these kind of red triangles signify dates where Fossil Fridays were released. Um, there were 31 in a period from June 2018 through February 2019. Um, and as you can see, they don't really correspond to peaks in site user activity. Um, sometimes they're associated with um, a trend up or a trend down. So we release new blog posts on Monday and Thursday. So those typically are what the peaks are. So here are some of the social media data, comparison of reach. You see we have a couple of tweets that did very well, which kind of hides how the other two platforms are, are doing. So if we remove Twitter, you can see that Instagram has kind of been on a slow rise and Facebook's kind of all over, but generally seems to be kind of increasing. Similarly with engagements, we have a couple of tweets that were um, outliers, which kind of mask the underlying other platforms. And again, Facebook is a little bit variable. Instagram has this sort of low increase. Um, but what we really want to do is look at the engagement rate. So although Instagram has the lowest number of reach and engagements consistently, it has the highest engagement rate, meaning of all the people that are seeing it, many of them are interacting with the material. Um, Facebook comes in second and then Twitter is kind of at the bottom, which is uh, misleading from these other two plots up here. So taking the engagement rate kind of helps uh, get a better picture of posts that are being successful. So what we found with this study is that Fossil Friday posts do not actually drive visitors to the Time Scavengers website, but participating in Fossil Friday is a great way to engage our community. Um, especially um, with the variety of posts we do. They seem to garner um, excitement from different people, so people interested in vertebrates, plants, and invertebrates. Um, and on average, these posts tend to get the highest reach and engagements on all of our social media platforms. Um, so the next kind of steps for this would be to see if we can pull out, are there specific types of Fossil Fridays that do better? Are there different ways to participate in hashtags where we can get our link um, involved as well so that maybe we can actually get people to the site uh, when we're actually participating in these things. So with that, if you guys have any questions, please leave a comment down in the section below. Um, before breaking, I would like to acknowledge our funding. Um, WordPress um, donated uh, about a year's worth of the site for us. The University of Tennessee paid for an additional year. Uh, the Paleontological Society allowed us to run several different types of analyses on our website um, and we have a series of patreon supporters that we appreciate um, if you're interested in contributing um, i'll be sure to leave a link in the description below okay thank you for your time